Hello, today we're going to be doing 11.2 notes, volume of pyramids and cones. So let's go ahead and start with what a cone is. So a cone is a solid with one circular base and a vertex. The height, radius, and slant of a cone form a right triangle. Alright, so we have our circle here at the bottom and it comes to the vertex at the top. And then the height, the slant, which is the side area here with the radius, create that right triangle. All right, so we're going to go ahead and watch this video till 324 to observe the relationship between the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a cone. All right, so let me go ahead and pull that up. All right, let's go ahead and watch it. All right, let's go ahead and go back to our notes now. So we want, given that the volume of a cylinder is volume equals pi r squared times h, then how could you find the volume of a cone? What formula could you use? So if we think about that video we just watched, we were able to fill three cones for every one cylinder. So by that logic, we can say that a volume of the cone is one-third of the volume 
So one third volume of a cylinder. So we will have one third times pi r squared h. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples. So we want to find the volume of each cone in the desired form. So this first one wants us in terms of pi. So we have one third pi r squared h, which we need the height, and we need to remember that the height is here, the height is not the slant, so the slant is from the vertex to the edge of the circle. Um, and But the reason why we know the, slight, the slant height, sorry, the slant and not the height, uh, we do have this right angle, so we can still find that. This is a triple, and this is a 5, 12, 13 triple. So therefore, I can say 1 third pi, and then r is 5, and square that, and then multiply it by the height. And we do want to leave it in terms of pi, so that means I'm only combining all the numbers. So 5 squared times 12, and then divide it by 3. And we get 100 pi meters cubed. So the volume, we want to make sure we cube it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 2. This one's rounded to one decimal place. And this one already gives us the height, so we don't have to go and find that. And I'm going to have 1 third pi r squared times the height. So 1 third pi, 4 squared times 8. And since we want the pi involved, we are going to include this whole statement. And we're going to get 134.0 inches cubed. So in our calculator, we should have gotten 134.04. Since we were rounding to one decimal place, we can't bring that 0 to a 1, just because it's a 4, not a 5 after it. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try three and four. All right, there is three and four. Go ahead and double check those answers, double check your equations. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number five. So a volume of a cone is 12 millimeters cubed and a height of four millimeters. Find the radius of the cone. So the volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared times h. So let's plug in that information we know. The cone has 12, volume of 12, and it has a height of 4. All right, so let's go ahead and start isolating our radius. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 4 pi. All right, and it doesn't say to leave it in terms of pi um, or to find the decimal answer. Since there's no pi with my 12, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in 12 divided by pi into my uh, calculator. So 12 divided by 4 pi, sorry, not just pi. And that's going to give me... 0 0.955. The decimal does go on a little bit further, but I'm just going to leave it there. And then I have 1 third r squared. Let's go ahead and multiply by the 3. And so I'm going to end up with 2.865 equals r squared. And then in order to get rid of the square, you want to go ahead and take the square root. So then that going to give me radius equals 1.69 millimeters. All right, so this one we didn't have a pi to cancel out, so I just divided it by pi, and it did give me a decimal answer, but I just kept the decimal answer along with me throughout the whole problem. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a pyramid. So a pyramid has one base, and all the lateral faces are triangles. The lateral faces all meet at one point called the vertex. A square pyramid has one base shaped like a square. 
The volume of a pyramid can be found by using the volume equals one-third times big B times H. Remember this big B is area of base. So if we have a square, we would have one-third times the side squared times the height or length times width. So we can still go with length times width here, um, even though it is a square. It's the same thing. All right, let's go try a couple examples. So let's start with number six. So find the volume of each square pyramid, if needed, round to one decimal place. So, it, and it does tell us this is a square pyramid. So if we are, looks like we're missing a side, um, we'll just use, um, know that knowledge that we are using square pyramids. So I have one third times the area of the base, so that's going to be 6 squared, times the height. So 1 third times 6 squared times 8. All right, and so when I plug that all into a calculator, I'm going to get 96, and then I'm going to put inches cubed because it's a volume. All right, let's go ahead and try the next one. So I have 1 third times the area of the base. So this is 10, so I'm going to put 10 squared, and then times the height, which is 12. And if we see here, we made another right triangle. We didn't necessarily need to know the slant in this case, but as we can see, the slant, the height, and then um, it's not a radius like a circle, but half of my square um, does create that right triangle. All right, when I plug this into a calculator, I'm going to get 400 in meters, sorry, not inches, looking at the wrong problem, 400 meters cubed. All right, let's try one more together, then I'll let you try the next few. All right, so I have one-third times the area of the base, so 16 squared, and then we want to multiply by the height. So as we can see here, half of this will be 8, right? So then we have this right triangle. So I have 8, 17, and so this is going to be 15. So it's an 8, 15, 17 Pythagoras triple. So 8, 15, 17. All right, and so we'll go ahead and multiply this by 15. Go ahead and plug this whole thing into a calculator, and I'm going to get 1,280 inches cubed. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 9, 10, and 11. So I want you guys to try these three. So take a second, pause the video, and try these ones out. All right, here's 9, 10, and 11. So number 11, that was a Pythagoras triple, um, but I had to bring it down a little bit. So 30 and 18, I recognize 6 was common between both of those, so I divided them by 6 to get 5 and 3. So I knew that third side had to be a 4, but I have to multiply it by 6 to get the actual answer, which is how I got that 24. All right, and that is the end of 11.2. Please be sure if you have any questions to ask your teacher and have a wonderful rest of your day.